Well, welcome to another Sabbath day. This lesson is going to be on mercy. The mercy that the Lord shows to his children and the mercy that we should show each other. Now, just remember, if Suppose you were a farmer and you found somebody in your field taking, you know, a lot of your crops. And you think, well, you know, I want to call the police on this guy and, you know, he's stealing my crops. And then you find out that maybe he had a bad event in his life, you know, uh, he lost his job or maybe some kind of a disaster, home burned down or something like that. And you found out doesn't have anything to feed his family with. You know, what are you going to do? You gonna call the police on somebody that uh, like that? Or are you going to help him uh, take home a armful of food for the family? You know, the, uh, the Lord says he blesses us. And we're supposed to share those blessings with those that are less fortunate. You know, the two commandments, Jesus broke down the Ten Commandments to the two commandments. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. He said, on those two hang all the law and the prophets. On those two things. With that in mind, let's take a look. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And there's a whole bunch of people who will tell you that if you try to keep the commandments, that you're earning your salvation. You know, what can I tell you? All I know is what I read in the Bible. That's all I can tell you. In 2 Samuel 22.51, we read, He is the tower of salvation for his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, unto David and his seed forever. In 1 Kings, 8.23, we read, And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee, in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keepeth covenant and mercy with his servants that walk before thee with all their heart. In First Chronicles 16.34, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. You know, that phrase pops up over 30-something times. For his mercy endureth forever. In 2 Chronicles 20, 21, we read, and now this is uh, concerning King Solomon when he took over as king. King David had just died. Solomon was his son. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Like I said, that phrase pops up a lot. Ezra 3.11. Now this is after Judah went into the Babylonian captivity for their wickedness and sin for 70 years. Ezra led them out of Babylon into back to Jerusalem. So Ezra 3.11. 
And they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good. For his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. In Ezra, I'm sorry, Nehemiah. Nehemiah is a companion book to Ezra. Nehemiah 1.5, And said, I beseech thee, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Now we're getting into the Psalms. And King David wrote many, many of the Psalms under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. In Psalms 13, 5, But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Boy, that word mercy appears a lot in the Bible. Psalms 21, 7. For the king trusteth, for the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. 23rd Psalms. We're just going to read verse 6. You know, 23rd Psalms. That's one of the most well-known and popular verses of the Bible. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is was a very, very requested. The 23rd Psalms was uh, requested quite a bit. I used to go to the veteran cemetery and do memorial services and this was one of the most requested chapters in the Bible very beautiful Psalms 25 7 remember not the sins of my youth boy I can relate to that I gave the first half of my life to the devil. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Psalms 25.10 All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant, and his testimonies. Here we have Psalms 51.1. In the notes it says, To the chief musician of Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone in to Bathsheba. Now, if you don't know the story, you know, if you've never read the Old Testament, you're really robbing yourself of many, many spiritual riches. See, David went in unto Bathsheba, who was another man's wife, and then he had the other man killed so that he could have his wife. And Nathan the prophet confronted him and David confessed his sin but yet he had committed murder. But listen to what David had to say. Now, something you should know. The Lord said that King David, that David was a man after his own heart. Was David perfect? Oh, no. David did a lot of foolish things. But he always repented. And he always turned to the Lord. And he always admitted his wrong doings. So what did David have to say? Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according 
unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. In Psalms 57.10, we read, For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Psalm 61 and verse 7. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. Psalms 66 and verse 20. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Psalm 69, 13. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time. O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. In Psalms 85, 7, we read, Show us thy mercy, O God. I'm sorry. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Hmm. And 85, Psalms 85, 10. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Psalms 86 and verse 5. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Psalms 86, 15. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. Okay, Psalms 89, 14. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. In Psalms 98 and verse 3, we read the following. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. His truth endureth to all generations. That means pretty much forever. Unless, of course, you listen to some of these Bible correctors, and then that will tell you, well, you know, we, we're not sure what the Bible says because all the original manuscripts, they're, they're gone. So, sorry, we don't know. Well, the Bible declares that his truth endureth to all generations. Psalms 103rd chapter in the 8th verse. 103.8 This is one of my favorites. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Psalms 103.11 For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. 
Psalms 103.17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children. Psalms 106.1. Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Hmm, we've read that before, haven't we? For his mercy endureth forever. Psalms 107.1. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Hmm. Seems like we just read that, huh? Psalms 118.1. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Psalms 118.2 Let Israel say now say that his mercy endureth forever. Verse 3 Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. And if you don't know what the house of Aaron was, he was the father of the house of the Levitical priesthood, Levi. Verse 4, let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. Psalms 136, 26. O oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 145, 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. Psalms 147.11 The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Proverbs 21.21 21. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. So those that follow after righteousness and mercy will find life, they will find righteousness, and honor. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Have you ever heard these people tell you that repentance is a work or it's optional? You know, and it doesn't mean they, they say, well, you know, you got to repent of unbelief. Uh, they, they say, oh, well, you don't have to repent of your sins. But what does Proverbs 28, 13 say? He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Now, when you read the book of Leviticus and the book of Hebrews, the blood of bull and goats would cover sin. It would cover them. Didn't get rid of them. The blood of Christ had to do that. So, covering your sins was not enough. But it says, Whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So we, we were supposed to confess our sins openly and forsake them. So if you were a, an adulterer, you should admit, hey, I, I'm an adulterer. And then you have to forsake the sins. You have to stay away from them. And it says that though them shall have mercy. I mean, this isn't, this isn't my doctrine. This is what, you know, Proverbs was written by Solomon. And the Bible declares that Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. 
So confess and forsake sins, and they'll have mercy. Do we believe the Bible or do we believe TV preachers? Isaiah 54, 8. In a little wrath, in a little wrath, that's anger, in a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. You see, in Isaiah's day, Israel had gone into apostasy and done everything that they could, you could think of to, to bring him to anger. So he says, in a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. See, America is about to find that out. Isaiah 49, 13, Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth in the singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. Isaiah 54, 10. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. I believe this is... Uh, there's a parallel verse in the New Testament. I believe it's in the book of Revelation about all the mountains falling away. I'm kind of paraphrasing. But I think this is the end time. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that have mercy on thee. All right, that parallel passage for what we just read in Isaiah is found in Revelation 16. Oh, let's take a look. Let's see, what, where are we going to start here? How about this? Revelation 16. Oh, let's see. Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. You know, why would the Bible tell them that the place in the Hebrew tongue is called Armageddon? You know why? Because the New Testament was written in Greek. And it's telling the people that know Hebrew it's called Armageddon. So the New Testament was written in Greek, but it's telling you what a word is in Hebrew, so that if you were Hebrew and you spoke the language, you would know what it meant. And there's people that will tell you that Oh, no, 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 no. The New Testament was written in Hebrew and then translated by those horrible pagan Greeks. Don't believe it. It tells you right here. And he gathered them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And he tells them that for a reason, because it was written in Greek. And he wanted the Hebrew people to understand Armageddon and what it meant. Verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. Hmm. Just like when Christ was on the cross, he said, It is finished. 18. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake. And there was a great earthquake, such as what? What, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. 
So there's going to be the greatest earthquake the earth has ever seen. And cities and nations are going to fall. I mean, this is going to be probably uh, on, on a scale of 1 to 10 on the Richter scale. This is probably a 15 or a 20. All right. So, Revelation 16, 20. So after the earthquake, the great city was divided into three parts, and cities of the nations fell, and Babylon came into remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Verse 20. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. So evidently, the islands are sinking and the mountains are leveled. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. So, and every island fled away and the mountains were not found. So yeah, that's the uh, companion verse that we had just read. Isaiah 54.10, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. Isaiah 55.7 How's this for a verse? Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Let the wicked forsake his way. Haven't you been listening to people on famous preachers on the internet and they're saying just repent of your belief and that's all you got to do is repent of your belief and just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and live any way you want. But the, Isaiah says, let the wicked forsake his way. Hmm. Hosea 2.23 And I will sow her unto me in the earth and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them that were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. So who are these people that didn't have mercy? Well, if you turn to Jeremiah 3.8, and when I saw, and I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Jeremiah 5.11 For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. You see, God divorced Israel and put her away divorced her. You see, she was the one that no longer had mercy. Hosea 2.23 again. And I will sow her into me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. You see, when you read the book of Hosea, God says, Well, you were my people, now you're not my people. And in Jeremiah, they were divorced. They were without hope. 
They were without the covenant, without hope, without mercy. Very, very important concept. But that's what the new covenant was. In Osea, I have a playlist. I hope you'll take a look at it. It's on the book of Hosea. That book is a very important book. You should read it sometime. Because the book of Hosea, it's in the Minor Prophets. It's in the books um, just before the New Testament, toward the end of the Old Testament. And it's not very long. I think it's like four, five, six pages, something like that. And it tells how the Lord had cast off his people, Israel, and said, you're not my people. But then it promises that in the place where they were told that you are not my people, that there they would be called, here are the children of the living God. Well, you know, I started this, so let's finish it. Turn to book, turn to Hosea chapter 1-1. Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Did you catch that? Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Did you notice that? All the churches always say, oh, Jews and Israel, they're the same people. How can they be the same people? They have different kings. They had different kings. Okay? So, evidently, if they have different kings, they're definitely not the same people, are they? Besides, didn't we read in Jeremiah that God divorced Israel? But he didn't divorce Judah. Verse 2. The beginning, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. See, Hosea is likened unto the Lord who married Israel. And Israel went and played the spiritual whore with every god around. And Israel is likened unto the wife. I mean, aren't Christians called the bride of Christ? Okay? I mean, think about it. There's always parallels, the, the Old and the New Testaments. So, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblam, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Didn't God say he was going to divorce Israel? He's going to cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. He's going to cause it to, they're going to cease to exist as a kingdom. Verse 5, And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name Loruhamah. For I will no more have mercy. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. But I will utterly take them away. And that's exactly what happened in the Assyrian captivity. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. And will save them by the Lord their God. And will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned, 
Lord Yuhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then God, then said God, call his name Loami, for ye are not, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Boy, that sounds pretty bad, huh? Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Hmm. The number of the children of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Well, let me tell you something, people. I live in South Florida, and there's a lot of sand on that seashore. And a few million Jews do not make the sand by the seashore, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Nuh-uh. Sorry. Sorry. A few million Jews just don't cut it. It says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that, in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Now, where, 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 where did this happen? This is Jerusalem, people. The very same place where God said, Ye are, You are not my people. There it was going to be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. And when do we become the sons of the living God? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Verse 11. Then shall the children of Judah and, and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, that's Christ, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. So, verse Hosea, chapter 2, verse 23. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, not Gentiles that never knew God, you're talking Israel. Israel that was divorced, You're, which are not my people. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people. And they shall say, Thou art my God. Hmm. Is there a second witness? Oh, yeah. Turn to Romans chapter 9 and verse 25 and 26. As he said also in O.C., this is the Greek rendering of Hosea. O-S-E-E, -E, it's the Greek rendering of the word Hosea. It's, it's, I mean, this guy is quoting directly Old Testament scriptures. Paul, you know, these Paul haters, these Paul haters. This is why. They don't want you to know who you are. As he said also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place, Jerusalem, that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Can I get an amen? Amen. Wow. Hosea 6.6 6. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. In Jonah, Book of Jonah 2.8 they that observe lying vanities, a vanity is something worthless. 
They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Micah 6 8, Minor Prophets. He hath showed me, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. So we're to love mercy. Now I'm you know, this is the this is where people get messed up. Capital crimes. Capital crimes are crimes that were commanded to be put to death. Okay? If somebody cursed the Lord, that was a capital crime. If somebody committed a murder, that was a capital crime. If somebody steals from us to feed their family, that's not a capital crime. Okay? And even though you could you know, if you found out they were in need, you don't, you don't, you have mercy on them. Oh, well, you stole uh, a basket of corn to feed your family? Well, here, take two more and come back next week. You know, that's mercy. I mean, the Lord had mercy on us. Shouldn't we have mercy on those who wronged us? I mean, let's face it, we've all wronged the Lord. You you know, I tell you what, I did some things. You know, if you'd have asked people that knew me in high school and 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 be and tell them, you know, if somebody would have said, Bob, you're gonna be a, a chaplain or or whatever, you know, when you get older, I'd have probably you told me that in high school, I'd probably have cussed you out. Because I absolutely detested, um, well, I won't say I detested Christians. I detested churchianity because I saw the hypocrisy in the churches. You know, it was all about money. The laws were nailed to the cross except for the tithe. Oh, yeah, keep that tithe. So, we're to love mercy and walk humbly with thy God. Micah 7.18 Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity? and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. Zechariah 7.9 This is the last of the Old Testament. You know, people say there was only judgment and death in the Old Testament. But I've been reading a lot. This has all been Old Testament, hasn't it? Zechariah 7, 9. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. Now we're in the New Testament. Matthew 5, 7. Jesus speaking. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Hmm. So those that show mercy will be shown mercy. Uh, I tell you what, I believe, I definitely believe the words of Jesus. Matthew 9, 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I'm not, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Haven't you heard people say that, oh, well, that what that really means is uh, repenting of your unbelief. But Jesus saying he's calling sinners to repentance. Why didn't he say, I'm calling unbelievers to repentance? But it doesn't say that. Jesus is not saying, I'm calling unbelievers to repent of their unbelief. He's saying, I'm calling sinners to repentance. Sinners. What do sinners do? They sin. We all sin. You know? Think about it. I mean, 
I get people all the time saying, oh, if, if you believe in repentance, oh, well, that's, that's a heresy. Really? Jesus said, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. What can I tell you? You know? All right, let's go to Matthew 23, 23. Now, for those of you that don't know what, scribes were the copyists of the Bible, the Old Testament, and the Pharisees are a denomination of Jews. Here's uh, the words of Jesus, Matthew 23, 23, King James Bible, by the way. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Boy, that's anti-Semitic, isn't it? For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, mm. and have omitted and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Mm. So you you want people to pay tithes, but the important things of the law you've neglected. Okay. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment mercy and faith these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone oh yeah yeah they they were preaching tithing back in the old you know back in the days of jesus oh yeah you better tithe but uh judgment mercy and faith those were the things that jesus said were important luke 154 he hath hope in his servant israel in remembrance of his mercy. Luke 172. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. If you want to read something really good, you could read the entire chapter of Romans 9. I mean, we read a couple pieces of it, but the whole thing is good. Ephesians 2, 4. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. Paul. Yeah, the false apostle Paul, they'll tell you. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Yeah, that sounds like something a false apostle would write, doesn't it? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Well, I tell you what, these Paul haters, they, they really, they, they really tick me off. I'm sorry. Um, first Timothy 1, 2, unto Timothy, another Paul, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, hoo, 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 grace, mercy and peace, from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. Titus 1.4 To Titus, mine own son after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Titus 3.5 Ooh. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Oh, no. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what. If, if righteousness got us into the kingdom of heaven, um, I'd be in hell already. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Hebrews 4.16. I love this verse. Absolutely love it. Now, the book of Hebrews is kind of interesting. It should always be read in conjunction with the book of Leviticus, which is the Leviticus, Le, the Levites were the priests that were to serve God in the tabernacle and in the temple. And it details how to build the ark and, you know, how to do the temple sacrifices and what have you. And then the book of Hebrews, you know, the, the book of Leviticus is the old, the old covenant. And then the book of Hebrews explains 
the new covenant, the blood of Christ, and how it's a better covenant. And the author of Hebrews is a secret. But I believe it was Paul, but, you know, if you think it was somebody else, that's fine. Some people say Luke. Some say some of the other apostles, you know, like Andrew or John. But the uh, author of Hebrews was never really officially known. It's kind of a mystery. We'll find out in the kingdom, and I bet you it's Paul. Hebrews 4.16, let us therefore come boldly, boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Can you imagine? They, we're encouraged to boldly go unto the throne of grace. And that's the throne of Christ, people. Grace is unmerited favor. I mean, if we didn't, I didn't do nothing to deserve the mercy and grace and love of Christ. I mean, I mean, I, I just, I, I, I'm so humbled that he would even look down and have mercy upon me. But we're supposed to boldly go to the throne of grace. You know, not timidly. Boldness. James. Chapter 2, verse 13. Um, James is a great book. Um, a lot of people don't know it, but James had a father whose name was Joseph, and he had a mother whose name was Mary. Yes, guess who he grew up with? He grew up with Jesus. <laughs> so I, you'd think he knows a couple of things about, you know. Okay. James 2, 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that showed no mercy. Hmm. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. So if you didn't show mercy, that's what you're going to get. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. James 3.17 but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. James 5.11 Behold, we count them happy which endure, Oh boy, enduring what? Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. See, when it says that the Lord is very pitiful, it means he's having pity upon us and tender mercy. Okay? First Peter. 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that's a very, very important doctrine, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Remember, we were talking about Hosea? And the people that were not a people, the people who were a people, not a people, and then to become a people later? Ha <laughs> ha! 1 Peter 2.10 Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You know, people will tell you, oh, well, that's, you know, that's because we're Gentiles. You know, we're non-Jews. Well, we, you know, we probably are non-Judah. We're probably Israel. But if you believe that, you're a racist, right? And that's what they got to throw at you because they can't deny it with Scripture. So they got to throw names. I got called racist today. But that's all right. I get called racist, anti-Semite, eh, whatever. 
2 John 1, 3. Grace be with you. Mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Jude 1, 2. Jude chapter 1, verse 2. Mercy unto you, mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. And then we read in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, unto eternal life. How's that? So, can't beat that, huh? All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that light of life is Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious and holy name, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to him. Amen.